Hallelujah. Father God, I pray that you will bless this word. Father God, I pray that I will decrease and you will increase in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that every ears that is under the sound of my voice, Father God, that you will begin to refine their hearing, that you will begin to open the heart, the understanding of their heart. You will begin to open the eyes of their heart. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you will bring clarity, you will bring wisdom, you will bring knowledge, you will bring understanding with this word that you have given unto me to share with your children. Father God, I pray that you will give me the words, the vocabulary, the articulation um, on what to say and what not to say and how to say it, Father God. Father God, I submit myself to you. I submit this word to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and rose on the third day. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you're not a mute God. We thank you that you are a God that speaks to your children. You're a God that speaks to your people. We thank you, Lord. And we pray that this revelation will go forth. It will be an untimed word. It will be a word that will edify your children. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So back in September, on September 3rd, 2020, I, while praying, I saw a vision of a black tree and it was huge. It was a huge black tree. When I say a black tree, like everything was black. The trunk was black. The branches were black. The leaves were black. The fruits were black. And I said to God, um, what, what, what is this tree? What, what, what's going on with this tree? And the Lord said, this is the tree that is in the spiritual realm that is used to manipulate the black community, that is used to manipulate um, the history of black people, the pain of black people, um, the unhealed wounds of, of, the, of the black community. And the Lord, this was when God gave me this word, September, 2020 this was during the time of like the black life matters movement and the george floyd murder and all this uproar that was going on um in the media and then the lord began to speak to me um the lord began to speak to me and he said it started with slavery the blacks were strategically oppressed the, the black were strategically conditioned to welcome certain platforms that will carry out the agenda of the enemy. The Lord said, this is years of sowing the seed of oppression on, of the blacks. Um, this is a deeply rooted and deeply planted seed that has built a foundation for the black community to welcome certain agenda of the of the um of the enemy to welcome certain demonic agenda um and i was just like god like <laughs> what are you saying i'm like tell me more and the lord was just like you know the real the real agenda of slavery the real agenda of racism wasn't what we saw with our natural eyes and i'm by no means undermining what the black community and our ancestors went through during the time of slavery and racism and what we're going through now i am a black man who have constantly experienced discrimination and racism in the line of work that i do and just in my regular day-to-day -day life um, I, I, I have experienced and, and constantly have to navigate um, discrimination and racism and stereotype as a black man in America. But the Lord said to me that what we saw, what happened with the black community that we, that we saw with our natural eyes, that's not the real agenda. So we saw the black community being on plantation, being enslaved, having to do with segregation in education, having to do with segregation in community and, and neighborhood, and being on the plantation and being slaves and being beaten and being killed and being lynched and he said God said while those things were horrible and wrong in a natural realm they those things were not the real agenda the real agenda of slavery and racism was to condition the hearts and the, to condition the hearts and the mind of the black community so when certain agenda is 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 released in the world in the name of protecting the black and in the name of of defending the black the black community will welcome that agenda even if that agenda is not of christ 
another thing that the Lord said to me was just that another another agenda the spiritual agenda behind racism and slavery was to mentally condition the black community to be in a victim mindset to be in a woe is me mindset you know um very often we see members of the black community um um will cry victim even when we're not the victim will cry woe is me even when woe is not you the, 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 the spiritual agenda of racism and slavery was for the black community to attach their identity to what happened in slavery, to attach their identity to what happened um, um, in racism. You constantly hear, you know, the black community say, where's my 40 acres and my mule? But no one is saying, where's my promised land or where's my promise from Christ? But they want their 40 acres and their mule because their identity and, 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 and the things that they think belong to them is attached to the history of slavery, is attached to the history of racism. And that is the real agenda, the spiritual agenda behind racism and slavery was not what happened to the black community and the black race in the natural realm, but it was what was being happening in the spiritual realm. And that was a conditioning of the minds and the heart to let the black community to be a community that welcome the agenda of the enemy when I say the agenda of the enemy I'm talking about um, stuff like BLM the black Lives matters movement this is by no way exposing that movement because by now that movement had been exposed that it is not of God and was never of God so we know that and if you don't know that by now well now you know and you, you should go do some homework on the black Lives matters movement but one of the reason why the black community and the, the black race welcomed the black Lives matter movement and 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 um and um just, you know welcome it with open arms is because we were conditioned to condition to not to believe that we have never been protected we, we we were conditioned to believe that we need the protection from these imposters and from these facade that claim that they're protecting us the Lord said that you know the spiritual agenda behind racism and slavery was to leave the black community in a place of hurt and unhealed wound because when we are hurt and we're unhealed it distorts our perspective on things when we are hurt and we're unhealed it dilute our desire when we are hurt and unhealed, it allows us to look for a quick fix to medicate the pain that we're feeling. Hallelujah. It was an agenda of the enemy. It was an agenda of the enemy. Divide and conquer. Break, break, break them so we can make them ours. That's what the enemy said. Hmm. So then I continued, then the Lord said to me, therefore, it will take a divine move, a revival to uproot this seed. This is a tree of blackness, said the Lord. So slavery was, slavery was um, a seed. Racism was a seed. Segregation was a seed. What else? Um, 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 the, ne the, the, the social gap. The, the unemployment, the not having a right to vote, all of those things were a seed that was being planted in the black community to, birth, to, to bring to life this tree of blackness. That it is, and then this tree of blackness now bear black fruits. And some of these black fruits are the Black Lives Matters movement. Another black fruit that I, so in the spiritual realm, I saw that this tree had black fruits and one of the black fruits were labeled um, BLM. Another black fruit was, was the name of a black, our first black president that went into power. And we saw how the black community welcomed him, even though he implemented laws and policies that, that, was, that was disrespectful and did not honor the word of God. We welcome him because we are hurt, we are broken, we are healed. So any black person that goes into power is a milestone and a success for the black community. We don't take time to discern them. 
We don't take time to analyze them. We don't take time to see if their agenda is of God. We don't take time to see if they're going to even do anything that's going to uplift the black community. The moment a black person go into power, we praise them. We, we shout, yes, we have arrived. <laughs> so one of the black fruits on the tree was the Black Lives Matters movement. One of the, the a couple of the black fruits on the trees were were the names of different black people who are in power who we we praise because we believe we have arrived. We have somebody in power ship. We have somebody in the presidential seat that look like us, that represents us. And because of that, it it it, 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 it we welcome their agenda, even if their agenda is not of God. They needed the vote of the black community. They needed the approval of the black community. They needed the voice of the black community. So they conditioned us over years and over time and for 400 years. So when this time come for them to push their agenda, we would receive it with open arms. We wouldn't question it. And then it will divide us. Because there's some of the blacks who are like, nah, this ain't, this ain't for us. This ain't of God. And then there's some that are like, yeah, this is what we've been needing. We, we went through years of being at the bottom. It's time for us to be at the top. It even brought segregation and division in the church, the black church. Hmm. The Lord said, this is the tree of blackness bearing fruits of witchcraft, fruits of pain, fruits of immorality, fruits of anger, fruits of vengeance and brokenness cried the holy spirit so when the lord when the god was revealing to me i saw the holy spirit weeping because he knew the agenda behind these things and he see the fruits that's being bare and he see how the black community was just falling for this trickery falling for this facade then i heard the holy spirit said what have they done to you Many of what have they done to you, my black people? Oh, my black people, what have they done to you? Many of you were misled and born in, into this concept and were taught that, that, to accept this pain and this identity and this anger and this vengeance that's attached to slavery, that's attached to racism. I weep for you because many innocent blacks have been misled by this and are so far gone in the concept of woe is me the black man or woe is me the black woman but god said vengeance is mine black people let me avenge you please free yourself from this yoke free yourself from this identity it is not yours to carry it was never yours to carry my cloud is coming my thunder is coming i will oppress those who oppress you but i call you to repent do not let vengeance do not let my vengeance for you be in vain for if i'm going to avenge you then you need to let go of the identity that's attached to the wrong that that, that was done to you that i'm avenging on your behalf I hear the Lord say, I beseech you, black community. I beseech you, my black people. You Be not conformed by the brokenness of your culture. Your, your identity should not be attached to the brokenness of your culture, said the Lord. Your identity should not be attached by the brokenness of your culture, said the Lord. Your identity is in me. You are not woe. Woe is not you, the black people. The Lord said, I want to liberate you from pain. I want to liberate you from freedom. I want to liberate you from that unhealed racial wound. Wounds. It was a plan all the while, all this time. It was a plan of the enemy. It was a plan of the enemy to build up, to, to, to play on our brokenness. I, I, one of the things that the Lord started to reveal to me, there are people, political leaders, people who are in leadership, people who are in power, they, they are playing on the brokenness of the black community. They are playing on the division in the black community. They are playing on, on the unhealed racial wounds in the black community. They are playing on the anger of that black man. Hallelujah. 
It was an agenda. It was not of God. It was an agenda. The Lord said, yes, slavery was wrong. Yes, racism was wrong. But do not tie your history and your identity to that. Because the longer we keep our history and our identity tied to slavery and tied to racism and tied to discrimination and tied to segregation, the more control the enemy will have over us. I hear the Lord say, emancipate yourself and allow me to emancipate you from this witchcraft that was placed upon the black community from this generation slavery and racism is a spirit and they are generational <laughs> hallelujah the black tree the black tree the black tree that's bearing black fruits That's bearing black fruits. We're stuck in a victim mindset as a black community. We're stuck in a victim mindset as black people because of what they have done to us, because of how they have conditioned us. We're, we're not healed. We're not healed as a community. We're not healed as a people. And as a result of that, we are divided. And that was the plan of the enemy all along. They needed the voice of the black people. They needed the vote of the black people. They needed the approval of the black people. That one particular political party that is just running with the agenda of the enemy. I'm not saying that either of the political, political party None of them is holier than thou and none of them is perfect. But there's just that one political party, and I won't call its name, y'all should know what it is already, that is just running with the agenda of the, the enemy, but it's also running with the votes and the approval of the black community and people of color. And the Lord said, you know what, this seed that was planted, this tree of blackness is not only affecting the black community, but it's also affecting the white community because there's a, there's a witchcraft of guilt over the white community. Those white community, the people in the white community, and trust me, I love when a white person can identify their privilege and identify their whiteness. I love when they can do that, but not from a place of guilt. It has to be from a place of love. But you have some black, some white people because of what happened in slavery, because of what happened in racism, and because of what's happening to the black community, they overcompensate, they support, they give their vote from a place of guilt. My ancestor did this to y'all. So let me make a difference. So this black tree is not only just affecting the black community, it's across the board. Like I said, it was a spiritual agenda to get things stirred in the way the enemy wanted to go, to welcome certain law, to welcome certain policies. The Lord, the Lord wants to put an ax to the root of this black tree. I saw God raising up, you, you, you know what's lacking? There's lacking real people of God in, 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 in political power, in judicial power. But the Lord is real. I saw, I think what I, one of the things that I wrote down, the Lord was just like, um, I will unleash the hounds of heaven up on those who oppress you. He said, I, 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 will, move, I, will, I will cause my prophets and my apostles and my intercessors to move in a way like Harriet Tubman and Martin Luther King to free you. They need to be another underground railway deliverance. <laughs> Yes, Harriet Tubman did the Underground Railway um, um, for, for physical deliverance in the natural world. But I see an Underground Railway movement in the spiritual realm. Because though we that Underground Railway functioned in the natural realm and, and did some deliverance in the natural realm, we're still tied up. We're still under the agenda of slavery. We're still under the agenda of discrimination and racism. It still affects us. It still controls our emotion and our identity. And there's still work and deliverance that needs to take place as it pertains to this. Hmm. 
So the Lord is raising up intercessors. He's raising up prophets. He's raising up apostles. He's raising up pastors. He's raising up people who truly believe in him and will not filter his word. And he's going to put them in power. There's, there will be shiftings of seat in the political um, um, hemisphere. The Lord said, I beseech you, black people, I beseech you, black community, to do not conform, do not attach your identity to the brokenness of your culture because it's a witchcraft agenda. It's a spiritual agenda. It's a tree of blackness that 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 was being plant that was being implemented for years and years and years. I pray that you will take this revelation. I pray that it will open your eyes. But I pray more importantly that you will take this revelation. That any intercessors who are listening to this, that you will take this revelation up in prayer. You will take it into the courtroom of heaven. This is something that the Lord wants to address in the courtroom of heaven. But we need more representation in the courtroom of heaven for, 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 for this decree to be dealt with. For this decree to be passed. I see the Lord is ready to put an axe to the root of this black tree. And he said, will the black community repent? Will they open their eyes and see? Yes, what was done to them was wrong, but they don't live. They don't need to live in the identity of slavery and racism and discrimination and and all that negative seed that was planted because the longer we live under that identity the longer we will be under the spiritual agenda of the enemy